And we, are, I think we're good to go. we are good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to the Tuesday, May 9th meeting of Bexley City Council. Love to see the, uh, love a little chaos here in the uh, City Council chambers. It's good chaos, all right? Like, yeah. And as always, uh, thank you all for your service to our city. Mr. McPeak, busy, uh, busy evening for you, isn't it? Very exciting evening. Oh, yes, thank you. This is just the beginning for you just, tonight. Just I, starting, I just kicking it off here. Heading off to the Newport after this. That's correct. Would you please uh, take uh, the role for us? Be honored. Thank you. Um, Feibel. I am here. Klingler. Sure. Lampke. Here. Marcelino. Here. Markham. Here. Robinson. Here. And Sod. Here. And then I'd like to make a motion that uh, Matt Klingler's absence be excused tonight. He did have something come up that he was not able to be here. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under every God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I forget. Do we have any special guests here tonight? I don't know. If there, is there somebody here that's uh, maybe getting sworn in? I think we better bring a whole bunch of people in here. Chief, you better you better take charge of this situation, man. <laughs> Good looking group. Good looking group here. Thanks for coming tonight, everybody. Hey Fleming, do they, do they make you buzz that hair like that now? <laughs> you wanna start your one you start? That's right. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, your mic over here. Yep, we got you. All right. So um it is always a joyous occasion for us to be swearing in new officers to our force. And this evening uh we are swearing in two of our newest officers, and then also uh three officers who have uh, are rising to the rank of sergeant. Um, Chief, do you want to add anything? Before I make my long speech? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably the one thing. First and foremost, thank you, friends and family who have traveled from all over the state to be here for this. We are so excited to welcome two new officers who have lateral from other agencies. Um, one who I am very, very particular fond of the fact that we have a young lady from Bexley who is now joining the rank and file. So we're excited about that. In addition to that, we have three officers who went through an extremely intense process, written tests, an all day assessment center, and these three had um, reached the top ranking out of all that had applied and are now being promoted to the rank of sergeant. A lot of what we've talked about in our three-year strategic plan dealt with succession planning, development, growth, and looking at other opportunities. This is what Bexley PD continues to look like and is the future of our agency. So we're very excited and truly appreciate all the support from the mayor and city council and the community. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. Yes. Um, and, and to those of you who just heard Officer Winograd being congratulated for being a Bexley resident, I just want you to know that all of you too can be Bexley residents. So <laughs> the accolades can abound all directions. <laughs> um, so we are going to do the, our swearing in, in two phases. We're going to swear our officers in, and then we're going to swear our sergeants in. So if, if maybe Officer Winograd and Schwartz, you want to step to the side here a little bit and we're gonna do a, a bulk swearing in. If you could please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I say your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support the constitutional laws 
that I will support the Constitution and laws of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. And the Constitution and laws. And the Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio. Of the State of Ohio. And the laws and ordinances. And the laws and ordinances of the City of Bexley. Of the City of Bexley. And I will discharge the duties. And I will discharge the duties of the office of police officer. Of the office of police officer. The best of my ability. The best of my abilities. Welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. Sergeants, if you could please step up. This is a big, big moment for our agency. We talked about it this when we swore in our lieutenants, but creating additional avenues of growth and professional development in our agency is incredibly important to us. Um, it's been wonderful to witness all of you guys growing through your career. So thank you for being willing to step up and thank you for taking on this additional mantle of leadership. If you could please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I say your name. I, Al I, I ever believe. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution and laws. I will support the Constitution and laws of the United States. Of the United States. States. And the Constitution and laws. The constitutional laws of the state of Ohio, the state, the state of Ohio, and the laws and ordinances, and the laws and ordinances of the city of Bexley, the city of Bexley, and I'll discharge the duties. And I will discharge the duties of the office of sergeant, of the office of sergeant, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. Huzzah! Congratulations. So, if um, if if it's okay, if it's acceptable, because of the number of people and stakeholders. First, I'd like to say, we gotta give our mayor a round of applause for memorizing the oaths. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I think it would be helpful if um, we have um, each of you bring your family up and we get a photo with you and the mayor. I think that would be helpful. Capture this moment because it is really a special moment. So um, we'll start with um, Officer Schwartz and then Winograd and then move into our sergeants. but they also mentioned It takes a lieutenant to take the picture, sorry. I know, he seems a little old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She's got her she ready. No, I can't. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. But we'll go on the more river if she dies for a picture of it. Oh, really? Maybe I'm right. It's just mine. No. Yeah, I know. I'm doing my very best to stay out of this thing. <laughs> it's not working. So um, I'm going to pause just for a minute out of respect. Um, Sergeant Glick, I would appreciate if you would introduce your father. And obviously, uh, from one chief to another, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge your presence, your legacy, and now this opportunity for your son to be promoted. So 
I'm sorry to let you know who stands. My dad is Steve Blake, uh, retired to Chief Police Officer, Ohio Police Department. How many years of service? Uh, 35, 39, 40 years. That's the same thing. Yeah, where do you end when Yes, 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 I took the next and a lot of stuff on release. I'll give the group video. You know what we'll do? You for it. Come on in. Look, here's the last one. Ready to down there? Thank you, Brad. You're welcome to stay for a whole council meeting. If you're in the Rollins, you're also welcome to take off. Hey, congratulations, Sergeant. <laughs> All right, we're going to continue with a uh, swearing in for our land use strategy commission. <laughs> Josh Sikich, come on up and raise your right hand, please. I I hope he gets a badge, right? He gets a badge. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> he gets a uh, yeah, he gets a scaled ruler yeah. and a pencil. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, so Josh uh comes to us as a, a land use strategy appointee that we have on our resolution uh, with the backward Brand and transportation planning. Josh, you can tell a little bit about, about your background and then answer your questions the council has. It'd be great. Sure. Thank and, you. Uh, so, Josh, uh, I moved back in 2016. I uh, lived on Francis and Brandon, and now I'm at Ace 95 Burden. Uh, I've got a 20 year career in urban planning, transportation planning. Um, I, I graduated in urban planning at Pacific Pier State from the Ohio State University. Um, I work uh, for For things like bike lanes, multimodal infrastructure, Dakota, uh, uh, things like uh, transportation transit planning, uh, Link Us initiative. Uh, uh, contracts with Ohio Department of Trans Transportation with land use transportation trusts. 
uh, as well as contract with the uh, city of Chicago, where about half of my career was uh, before I moved to Mexico, which is my area, uh, looking at best practices in urban uh, mobility and transportation measures for the city of Chicago. So I'm uh, happy to throw my head in the ring uh, when I saw an email blast to residents uh, to volunteer. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate that very much. Questions, comments? Yeah, Ms. Saad. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you for your service. It sounds like you have a great resume and background, and it's exciting to have you join and help us with the city projects. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hard hitting questions? Come on. Pretend it's like a Supreme Court Hi. nomination sort of thing. Nothing? Okay. <laughs> okay josh thank you so yeah, much yeah we're yeah uh, <laughs> I, I i mean you you guys said it already but your background is incredibly impressive and what is really neat about our land use strategy commission membership as it is shaping up is just the real rich cross-disciplinary uh, skills and intelligence that are in that so thank you for agreeing to join and be part of it appreciate it yeah thank you uh, oh. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Superman uh, suit change and go manage Billy baseball. Love it. I support it. Thank you. It's easier than dealing with counsel. <laughs> Third guest, uh, indulge me just a little bit. I, uh, You guys know that I get to really spend a lot of great time with. Uh, uh, college students. And uh, one of the things I've started doing this year is running the internship uh, program for Ohio State. And it's just all these great kids that are doing uh, internships uh, in all different parts of government. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Whitney Way, come on up here. Uh, one of the students that uh, was with Sheriff Brown's office this year and just ended up spending a lot of time uh, together this, this semester uh, talking a little bit about Bexley City Council. And, and he said, he goes, I would love to come check out you know, Bexley City Council and say hi to people. And I said, well, definitely come in and uh, definitely make sure that microphone is on because you're going to want to hear Jordan's voice because he's got like the best voice. Well, I got to start out, start out deep here then. Yeah, that's right. right. All right. Yeah, me, me too, Jordan. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, um, he, you know, just for the record, uh, Mr. Markham, he uh, told me right before I had to give a little bit of a speech uh, introduction here. So uh, I, pre I appreciate you said something before me there. But uh, um, yeah, so as it says on the, the thing, uh, itinerary there, I, I'm with uh, U.S. Senator Sherrod Brown's office this semester. I'm a legislative intern. And I'm not here officially. Um, you know, don't get me in trouble. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm sure he would be very happy to see uh, the, the, the honorable um, and esteemed proceedings of this council, uh, the swearing in. And um, yeah, and like uh, Mr. Markin said, I just wanted to uh, see local homegrown, you know, uh, quality government in action. And, uh, you know, I've been learning about it for a long time and it's uh, an honor to be here. So I appreciate that. Uh, but of course, my main reason is for being here is that I, I promised Mr. Mark a copy of my book. Um, I accidentally gave it to Senator Brown uh, when I met him uh, the second time that uh, that time, but he gave me his book anyways. So anyways, <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to be a man of my word, and I signed it to him here. But uh, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, thank you. You can sit around for as long as you want, or as little as you want. And Jordan is going to uh, Louis Valentine's. Uh, 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 yeah, I'll group be now. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah, so job, fine time job. Um, so it's a temporary ten week thing with put this possible possibility for extension. But yeah, lead Ohio uh, to get involved yeah. in local uh, Democrat politics. And all I that. sunk our hooks into him pretty good. Oh yeah. yeah. Wait, Jordan. Before you, did you say your, that was your book that you just gave? Oh, President Mark. What's your What's your book about? Yeah, and, uh, what's if, your book I, about? if I can plug it real quick, yeah, yeah. So uh, my family member invented synchronized swimming, and so I wrote her first official yeah, biography. <laughs> no, yeah, was, we don't. You know what? You, we, you know, to your, your point, you don't have to uh, acknowledge the city official. Uh, uh, they they have they used to have soloists, synchronized swimmers, and so they're synchronized to the music. Music, I yeah, guess. That's right. right, that's cool. That's amazing. But uh, yeah, so I wrote that book um, in 2020. That came out after five right. years of research, and then the pandemic hit, and I'm like, well, I'm not just going to sit around twiddle my thumbs. I can go back to school for political science, and then uh, a few years later, I met Mr. Martin. That's so, very cool. Right. Thanks for asking. Isn't that great? Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming.
make sure that appears on your disclosure next year. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. I already filled out my financial disclosure. Yeah. Um, do we have any comment uh, slips? No speaker slips. All right. Uh, for the president's report, just a couple of things. I did want to mention that uh, we did have the first meeting of, and I probably don't have the name right, but the naming rights committee, anything, something like that. Yeah, the first ever meeting in the history of Bexley. Um, and as this is year of the parks, and there are a lot of, uh, you know, we had Jim Wilson in here, and we passed that uh that ordinance to create this this group or whatever. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. I think it's pretty interesting and it'll be really neat to uh, to be able to to see that in action. A lot of great people as well. I was, uh, you know, a few years ago I was on the city council and I was a little bit alarmed at the time to see that we made the Columbus Monthly. It was a article that was a little, you know, salacious. And then I was frightened to death when I heard that we had made Columbus Monthly again this last month. And I heard there was even talk of murder and stuff like that in it. But it turns out it was just Natalie. Uh, Natalie's book came out last week. She's featured in the Columbus Monthly. And uh, yeah, great, great picture of her outside of Eastland Mall. She was uh, Right. Yeah. And I, I am reading the book. Good book. Uh, one other thing uh, I, I will pass on to you because I, I told him I would uh, a, a little more student type stuff on um, Friday and Sunday. We had graduation rehearsal and graduation. And then I, I went into work the lines. And so you get these groups, huge groups of students in there in this hot, sweaty space, and you put them in order, and then you send them out into the stadium to, to graduate or whatever. And I had this, I had this great guy named Maxwell in the head of my line. So Maxwell uh, got extended face time with me, which you can imagine what a great experience that was for him. But uh, as we were there was spending that time, you know, he was asking me what I did. And, and I mentioned, I just wanted to say, I said, well, I, you know, I'm elected official in Bexley, Ohio. And he says, Bexley, Ohio. And I said, yeah, he goes, he goes, I've been to Bexley. And he said, uh, and he said, you guys have some amazing park spaces in Bexley. And I was like, and I was like, wow. I said, well, this is year of the parks. And uh, he said, he said, make sure you tell them how impressed I was. This little college guy just came out right there. Maxwell's going to dental school. So I got a good feeling about him. City attorney report. I, I have no report this evening, although I do want to know, is the air conditioning off on purpose in here or is it just broken? <laughs> Usually it's freezing cold. <laughs> Um, it's fine. I'm just kidding. Lorian is in charge of the temperature right now. Well, oh, we're in trouble then. <laughs> anyway, it's it's fine. No reports. Uh, city auditor. Um, just two two quick updates. Um, one, I do continue to do a very enjoyable monthly audit of invoices. Um, so just want to rest assured that looked at four invoices and confirmed that they all followed policies and procedures. So no concerns. Um, and then the second thing, which is super exciting for me, is that, um, you know, as you know, we have um, a plethora, we'll say, of, of cash and investments within our portfolio, over $25 million. And with the rising interest rates, um, many of our investments are maturing at very low rates, so a quarter of a percent, and they're being placed back in new investments at over 5% which based upon some of the renewals, that's about 60K of additional interest income over the year. So nonetheless, um, you know, know that as these investments mature, we're, we're putting them back into higher, higher yielding investments um, that will help out the financials. Um, so certainly if you have questions about that or more interest, just let me know. That's great to hear. More interest, <laughs> no <pun> intended, yeah. <laughs> All right, Mr. Mayor, will you take us through the administrative update? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, President Markham. Uh, we're going to start here with uh, Mr. Hale with the Finance Department. Beecher, do you have anything to report? I have no report uh, this evening. Next finance or next council meeting, we'll we'll have updated financial reports. 
Any questions for Beecher? All right. One of these days, we're going to fix finally the audio incoming off of Zoom. When we fix some other things, one thing at a time. It's all good. Thanks, Beecher. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. Bye. Uh, Police Department update, uh, Chief Lewis. Thank you. Nothing to add, sir. Any questions for the chief? I'm going to open this up. It's not a question, but yep. but Chief, I just wanted to say thank you to you and to Lieutenant Overly for coming to uh, last week's IRIS event for the Bexley Women's Club. I know that our 50 plus members really enjoyed interacting with you and getting to know you. Uh, and I know that there's a, a variety of civic groups that some of us sit on. So if there's opportunities to get you and other officers further engaged in the community, um, I'm talking to the council members when I say that, please let the mayor uh, and the chief know. Um, but thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule and for, uh, for visiting with us. Thank you for the invite and we will always accept those. Any questions? Uh, any other questions for the chief? Ms. Saad. I was just wondering if you could highlight for us Super Saturday and what that's all about. Pretty yes. Neat program. Mm -hmm. So um, what's going to happen, Officer Vermonten, um, it's a Saturday we've established in August. Um, it's going to be, um, he is an uh, Eagle Scout and is very heavily involved. And so he's going to be working with um, the young men and the Boy Scouts in that particular space. And so um, he's actually created some special certificates and we'll really be working closely with them. So um, we've captured some of that in, in the report. And uh, But he is very, very passionate. This is really the first for us, as well as the Boy Scouts, to be able to, to do this type of initiative. Um, and we're going to be sharing that more on social media as, it, as we get closer. Any other questions for Chief? I was um, just going to say, Chief, as that, as it's, you know, getting started, kind of like piloting, I'm sure that'll gain some awareness and uh, maybe some participation from the Girl Scouts as well after okay. that takes off, because we have a pretty, um, it very involved um, fifth grade and under uh, Girl Scout program here in the community too. So um, great job. Look forward to hearing more. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just checking who's next technically on the agenda. Um, Mr. Price. Here. Thank you, Mayor. Um, no further report other than the written report, but happy to answer any questions. Questions for Mike, Lauren? Related to which is that our beautiful young mansion, um, my street was flooded with students coming to the mansion to have the pictures taken. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, there were a lot of Bexley kids coming to have the pictures taken. People came from Pickering to People came from Pascoa. There were kids from all over Central Ohio coming to our gym, our park, our mansion to have a school. I just wanted to share that with everybody because I kept asking kids, and they're like, well, like, you're from us? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> anyway, I just thought you all would enjoy that little the capacity. Yeah. No, it is. It's it's great that we have a place that's so sought after. I will say, it makes it difficult when we're trying to rent the building on Saturdays. Um, so there's a balancing act there that we uh, we try to deal with. But it, it's 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 always nice to be a place that people want to be. So that's a good thing. But just to comment on that, somebody from out of town, Pickerington, actually came by to take pictures and they actually work in Bexley, but they had never been over to Jeffrey Mansion, but they were here for prom pictures and they were asking about renting the facility out and et cetera. So it's also a pretty good marketing opportunity. So there's two sides so, to so it. So. <laughs> Graduation parties, come on over. Mike, I, I just wanted to give you and your staff kudos. I saw the impressive hiring numbers for the summer for summer camp and the pool and all that. And I know you've been working really hard. Um, it's great to see such strong numbers and I wish you a lot of success this summer. No, I appreciate it. We're, we're very excited about it. We appreciate uh, support from, from council as we've had discussions about increasing pay rates for seasonal staff. I think that's obviously been helpful and 
we've been very proactive in trying to uh, with the hiring event that we had at the senior center and some other things, and it seemed to have bared some fruit. So we're, we're excited about that for this year, and we feel good about where we're at right now. Obviously, as we discussed in the past, having numbers is is somewhat different than having people committed to a certain number of hours. But we feel like we're in a really pretty good position at this point. So thank you, appreciate it. I'm going to share a quick story here with Mr. Price and Council for approving that last year, the pay increase. So I ran into a new 15-year-old in the community that I've known for a long time. He was very proud to say he's going to be a lifeguard this summer and that the pay was, he's very excited about the pay and that's what got him there. And then time and a half for swim lessons, he's going to look to do that as well. So um, we're doing good things that he's a great young man and he'll be great to have on staff and um, it so good job to council for approving that when we did because it's going to pay off this summer to get good uh, kids back out there in the community. So, uh, Mike, uh, any other, Mike, while we have you, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the prototype sign that we see here in the lobby? Oh, oh, what's this? Wow, what is that thing over there? Yeah, so this has been a project we've been working on for I don't know, probably close to a year. I think uh, even more. not more <laughs> in the range of a year. Um, and uh, Ben Goodman, I'm going to mess up the company's design path. Design path mm -hmm. um, has been our consultant uh, along with um, Elena Andrews. And uh, we've been, we've been really focused on creating a uniform sign package for the park system. The mayor has been uh, really pushing this effort. So I appreciate that mayor for all your work on it. Um, and so we have, there's a, uh, a plethora, since that's the word we're using today, a plethora of different um, types of signs uh, uh, in terms of what we're trying to convey, but this is one of the, one of the styles that we'll be using uh, the most. Um, uh, but there's a whole palette of different signs that we're looking at, and uh, we're excited about, I think, how it turned out. There's some tweaks as, as we look at it that we'll, we've already conveyed, um, uh, and so it's been really nice to have a uh, a showpiece to really see what it looks like, get a, a sense of scale, um, and get a get an, some ideas on some adjustments that we'll make. And hopefully, uh, we we have we have some budget for this in in this year, and we will uh, start to roll out some some sign some signage throughout. It really, it's focused Jeffrey Park and Schneider Park. Um, so, if you have any comments, we, like we where would this back. sign be, for instance? It, I mean, it looks like a street sign, but it's showing trail, so, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so don't focus too much on the content of this specific sign in terms of where it might locate, but this this style of sign might be located as you um, maybe pass the north side of Jeffrey Mansion heading back into the park, which would give you maybe an idea of, you know, where you are in relation to the park, uh, that you're in, what, what specific area you're entering within the park. Um, uh, it may also have rules on it uh, in certain locations. Um, but that would be an example. Another example might be in the Clifton parking lot um, in that area. So as you come into the and come into the into the Jeffrey Park facility, you have an idea of sort of what facilities are there, where they where they live within the park. And the sign clearly says no cats. It looks like yes, <laughs> yes, that's a cat. Yes, that's a cat. So this is like, to to highlight the content. Like the map is just kind of a sample map. The it's not really about the content. It's about the form. So okay. you might see in the back. It's this back is designed to be modular, slotting some things in and out for schedules, but that would be maybe something you might see more like at the tennis court. So it's just, it has multiple form elements to it to try to get a feel physically for how it works. Um, and then just the overall aesthetic in terms of just the, the color palette, the size um, is, is sort of what we're trying to prototype out and template. Um, and I think one of the things that, you know, we don't think about as residents uh, maybe, but like, if you were to say to someone, just go to Jeffrey Park and meet me at the tennis courts, right? They'd be like, oh, yeah. they might come in the, the top entrance. They might go to the pool and they show up at the pool and they're like, well, where am I? So this is this is a wayfinding, which is really important for Jeffrey, also very important for Schneider. How many times have I been telling to people, well, where's the dog park again? And I try to tell them and they're like, wait, <laughs> Aster? They're like, there's Schneider, is it Aster? And they're like, well, yeah, that's where it started, <laughs> which is kind of a testament to our doing. I kind of 
it t- tickles me a little bit, but it's that's like the Lewis and Clark directions to the dog park, you know. <laughs> like, um, nonetheless, I think uh, reinforcing what's in the park is going to be really important uh, going forward with Schneider as well. So, uh, and we see that there will probably be some. So there are, you know, this sign package has samples for didactic signage, or you're walking through the woods and it's like, this is a wetlands. Here's how they work. Here's what sort of wildlife is here. These are honeysuckle. They're not native. Take them down. Um, and so those might live on some manifestation at Commonwealth as well, even Havenwood. The idea is that we're going to have a, a consistent aesthetic throughout our parks with with the purposefulness of that signage. So excellent work to Mike and his team. It is a it is a incredible task. Believe it. I mean, I just the logistics behind this are a lot. Okay. Go ahead. Just a quick comment. I love the little accolade of the dog on the side because yeah. I feel like it's getting the point across, but it's not lately because I have this amendment that I'm covering for council. I've been looking at every park that I'm in every other day, um, how they're kind of saying no, you know, dog or whatever allowed. That feels much better. So good job. Thank you. And actually we even we're going to ask them to create us. It's just a sticker right now on a, on a metal plate, but we're going to ask them to create a black and white version of that. So it's not quite so like glaringly, yeah. the only splash of color is right there. So we're just continuing to work on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mike. Mr. Bayshore, I believe you are up next. Thank you for joining us this evening, Andy. <laughs> I don't have anything else to add to my report, but happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> any questions for Andy? Not a question, but the curbs and the work on Drexel is looking amazing. I see your crew out there working really hard. I've heard really good things from the public, even some of the neighbors that live on Drexel. And I can already see, Andy, that the the path on that street is really, and the face is already changing, even with the limited work we've done so far. So thank you. Mm -hmm. It's looking really good. I will be much happier when it's all done, but <laughs> very happy with the progress so far. So, ben? I, I don't even need the microphone, but this is actually just a quick funny story. I have two brand new um, temporary, like temporary licensed drivers, and we hit Drexel for the first time. And it was the first time that I was really aware because I'm the nervous mom sitting in the passenger seat trying not to die. <laughs> and we get down to the end of the street and it really does. It slows everything down and it really is kudos to the team. And uh, hopefully it, it, it does exactly what is intended. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Andy. And Andy, we'll be sticking around for a little longer because we'll be talking about the um, uh, Columbia Place Ordinance. Do you want to draw your attention to Columbia Gas Main is uh, project will be occurring on I think College and Pleasant Ridge is that correct? Uh, we spoke about this I think in the past because they were looking for um, a facility for a high pressure house essentially, and they're going to be located in that further south of Bexley, so that's no longer a component in Bexley of this project. Hmm. Okay, um, I will try to be quick uh, on my update. Uh, Mr. McPeak, uh, no promises. I'm gonna do my best. First off, I uh, wanted to start this uh, my update off by presenting the first ever year of the parks project fern hat Woo! to our city attorney, Mark Fisher. Oh, so, uh, you better wear that every meeting. A year of the parks pin, so you have that. And also, I got him, uh, and I didn't get it for him, but somebody gave this to me. This is a yes in my backyard pin that I thought, Mr. Fisher, you'd appreciate it. Hell yeah. Thank you for your service. Uh, that is it doesn't great. replace the uh, cool uh, print, but that's, that's okay. okay. We're still working on it. Um, you better wear that every meeting. I want to see that. <laughs> um, for sale, free cycle was a hit, I believe, in the community Sunday. Put a little bit of a damper on it with the rain, but um, Saturday seemed to be seemed to do well. Uh, sorry to those of you who were playing on Sunday. Um, I do want to say, hold on, I'll say that here in a second. A uh, couple things: we have our Year of the Parks tour and groundbreaking that are coming up 
um, on Thursday at Commonwealth, sorry. So Commonwealth, uh, there will be the Falcon guy. Did he ever text us back? We need to, yeah, Joe Dorian, the Falconer, uh -huh. will be there in theory with the Falcon. Um, and we will be taking a tour of Commonwealth and what's going on there. And then we will have a groundbreaking of the pond afterwards. It will be not super long, it's maybe 30, 45 minutes total, I think. So show up there at 4.30. 4.30. Where, where, where at at Commonwealth? Should we'll we be, be at the East Athletic Fields, I believe. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, we're going to start there and, and work our way west. All right. Okay. And then um, the... Uh, sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. Love Your Alley Festival is happening at Clifton Park Shelter House this Saturday. We have our One Bexley Community Workshop that's occurring um, next Wednesday. I believe Thursday at the uh, Bexley Public Library. Thank you for the correction. Whoa, whoa, I accept that. And then uh, pool opens this month. So hurry up and get your pool passes. I know that was, I was, I saw that on uh, the calendar. I was like, seriously, this month? Um, also, I've been continuing to work hard on our strategic plan. I wanted you to know that I'm not just blowing smoke. So uh, the plan is underway, well, well near completion in the draft. We are getting here to the end of that. But um, so I, I'm projecting that by our next council meeting, I will have a, uh, a completed draft uh, for you all to take a look at. Um, a couple of things here that you can just read about, I believe. Uh, one thing I think I want, to, I want you to be aware of that Morpsey is organizing a regional electric vehicle charger grant. Uh, we've been kind of waiting for that money to open back up again. And so we're proposing several sites. Here's some photos from the week. NOLA is uh, soft <laughs> open. Uh, this was oh, my a, goodness. This was a happy coincidence. I popped in just to say hi to the business owner and we were chit chatting. And then Brian Drury walks in. And then next thing I know, of course they, he was. They start just unrolling. Yeah a uh, tabletop of food so i got oh, man pressured into eating a crab leg it was pretty good yeah there you go is it for then as disclosure thing uh it's not shit I'm, I'm i need to put more stuff on social media our bexley bloomers did a kick out i think uh the magazine was there. i think i'll be in the bexley magazine yeah um troy already broke the news there's natalie at her book launch uh i hope you guys got to enjoy an arbor day cocktail at giuseppe's uh, if you didn't, I'd be happy to make you one. Uh, I didn't make that one, but uh, I don't know. You looked just, you looked sad, Chief. I mean, I'm just trying to be responsive here. Uh, Jane Baldwin was honored with the proclamation of the Women's Club. She has been a board member since 1967 of the Women's Club. It's intense. I uh, kind of wanted to piggyback off what was said about Jeffrey. We, we hosted the Central Ohio Mayors and Managers Association uh, there last week, and it was just really, you know, sometimes you see what you're doing through someone else's eyes. And so having like the mayors and the managers come in and just look, look, they look kind of awe as they looked around and they can look, you know, there was a beautiful sunny day and the doors were open and looking out over the park and the preschoolers playing in the playground. And there was like just a picnic happening right very organically at the base. And they were just kind of like, wow, this is, this is pretty sweet. And I was like, yeah, it is pretty sweet. Um, and this is Alex and I uh, doing some dueling walks at the API. Our trash talking has been going well. Um, and Chief, thanks for joining me today at Montrose. We spoke with our fourth graders about, uh, they're talking about the executive branch. So that's my report. Happy to answer any questions. How was your grilling or making food at the Friday night festival? It was great. Uh, Main Street was hopping on Friday night. Um, Alex and I cooked yakisoba. Um, Mike and his team was over at the Kosai Science Festival, uh, which was packed. Um, it was super successful, super popular. Uh, the AAPI Festival was packed. It was just, a, it was a great night. You could barely move down Main Street. There was so much traffic. Um, I think it was just people kind of gawking at what they were seeing, because I doubt they were just coming and going. Maybe they were, I don't know. Cruising. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Moving out the sights. Nice. Thank you for asking. Any more questions for the mayor? I will say real quickly, the next opportunity to grill, if you're looking for an opportunity, um, Mar May 20th at uh, Ferndale Mayfield um, block party, which happens at, at Schneider Park. 
uh, where we give away bikes and do some other stuff. So May 20th. Oh, May 24th is, yes, that's a, yet, yet another chance to cook out, right? At the, where is that at? All right. Hey, Jen. Can we get that? Can we get a microphone on, on the chief there? Oh, sorry. Yes. So we are going to honor retired Bexley police officers on May 24th from 11 to 1. We're also going to honor um, one of our dispatchers after 39 years of service. She's going to be retiring. So we're going to present her with a plaque during that cookout also. So I um, would love to have members of city council come out. And um, we've got a, a number of um, RSVPs already. And so we're actually going to just combine that with our retirees our active folks as well. So it'd be a nice, um, just kind of getting ready for, for um, summertime. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yes, ma'am. And what are we cooking, Chief? Do we know yet? That's the most important question. We've gotten requests for burgers, brats, and hot dogs. Okay. That's all right. We can do that. <laughs> you don't want to do like some homemade sushi or no? That was a joke. Poutine. Yeah, that went over real well. That was good stuff, guys. And I'm sorry for the heat in here. I our system, it just seems to be the the theme here is not really responding. So good. saving the environment. That's right. We're saving the environment. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And uh Turn it over now to the city attorney, Mr. Fischel. All right. We have the meeting minutes from April 25th, 2023 on the consent agenda. Any comments or questions over the consent agenda from council? Comments or questions on the consent agenda from the audience? If not, uh, I move to adopt the consent agenda. Second. Thank you. Second by Ms. Lamke, Mr. McPeak. Ms. Feibel? Yes. Mr. Markham? Yes. Mr. Marcelino? Yes. Ms. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Link, Ms. Ms. Lampke? Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Klingler and Ms. Sod? Yes. Consent agenda passes. Thank you, Mr. McPeak. Or me. Oh, thank you. Th oh, I thought you were. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so confused. I am um, going to thank you in advance for what you're about to do. <laughs> I thought you were turning it over to me and said the wrong I am, thing. I am turning it over to you, though. All yeah. right. Anyway, we have a third reading of Ordinance 13-23 to provide for an advance to the Main Street, Street, Main Street Streetscape TIF Fund from the general fund, repayable over a 10-year period commencing in 2024 in order to provide funding for TIF-eligible public space improvements. Ms. Lamke. As this is the third reading, obviously we've covered this in prior detail, but this is a, fun, a TIF fund to provide additional funding for our year of the parks through consultation with the mayor and the city auditor. Uh, they believe that the appropriate amount is what is listed and that our uh, city fund can cover this in full, correct? Over a 10 year period? Correct. Wonderful. Are there any questions from council? Any from the audience? Just going to note that uh, in this uh, period of high interest rates, it's kind of, uh, I think, a great thing that, that we can do this. And also a testament to the fiscal health and responsibility of the city that we are also able to do this, which is a great, great thing. That's so, true. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Mr. McPeak. Have um, an action. No questions. I motion to adopt ordinance 13 23. Second. Motion to adopt by Ms. Lamke and seconded by Ms. Robinson. And uh, we do need, we did offer an opportunity to comment. Okay. I think you did, but. <laughs> Technically, I think I still have that. I just think I still have that job. All right, Mr. McPeak. Mr. Marcelino? Yes. Ms. Feibel? Yes. Mr. Klingler? Ms. Lampke? Yes. Ms. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Saad and Mr. Markham? Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry. No. <laughs> 
uh, this is a really big deal case that's not settled here that's a uh, it's a really it's it's the next 10 years program out of our SIF and uh something we've been working really hard on so thank you for your support thank you well and if i could also make a comment you know there have been in prior councils accusations of rubber stamping you guys really vetted this well and it was explained very well and you know it's obviously the right thing to do too so kudos all around all right i guess we're on to second readings um ordinance of for a second reading of Ordinance 14-23, authorizing the mayor to accept the donation of real property from the Columbia Pay Place Association and providing for the amendment of the Columbia Place PUR, conditional upon the completion of certain repairs and upgrades under the conditions outlined, outlined herein, introduced by Ms. Feibel. Last week. Um, thank you, Sam. And do uh, you know that it's the cul-de-sac that's just to the north of um, City Hall? And um, the idea is that it used to be a, well, it is currently an association and the members, that the neighbors that live on that block take care of all the infrastructure that's related to keeping it safe and keeping it working the way it is. We are going to be, they, they would like for the city to adopt all those needs, all those services. Um, and and to actually turn that property over to the city. So um, we are blessed with Mr. Bayshore staying with us tonight mm -hmm. to kind of give us um, a little bit more information about that. So if you would, we'd be grateful. Sure. Um, this has actually been going on for quite a while. Um, and I've been able to have my staff do pretty good evaluation of everything ever there. Um, all together with concrete and water and sewer, it's a little over 111,000. But with that um, includes new water lines, new water services, um, all the curbs and sidewalks will be replaced due to when that was built many years ago, it wasn't following any of the city specs because it was private. And all the cross slopes on the sidewalks and driveways are not ADA compliant. So we have to replace all that. Um, we also had a outside engineering firm video the the sanitary and storm lines there's one repair we will be doing in the storm line but um overall this what the mayor has up there pretty much covers everything and I feel pretty good about um you know we have everything covered and, and ready to go um, if this would pass we would probably start the underground work um in early august and follow that with the concrete work probably starting in late august Danny, tell, may I please? Um, tell us who is actually going to be doing the, so, the, this work. Yeah, so the, the water and the sewer you see will actually be done by city staff. And we will use the same uh, contractor that's doing um, Drexel. And they should be done with the concrete work on Drexel late August. And we would use that contractor to do all the concrete work. Um, but city staff will be doing the water and sewer. May I yeah, no. Good question. And are how how uh, stressed and strained is it going to be on our service department to be able to accomplish this? Um, we'll be since we have you know uh, a timeline kind of out in advance. I'm I'm pretty comfortable with it. You, so, so you feel good about us doing this? Oh yeah, yeah. And 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 council knows that this is something that's yes, we are going to front this financially and the neighbors are going to be paying this back over over 10 years and then whoever um sh should someone move how i understand it and correct me um if i'm wrong mr kessler that if if the individuals were to move out of that it, it's understood that this the money will continuously be paid back um, it's something yeah. that will be inherited correct. correct so it's an assessment it would be an assessment on the property and and one of the questions for mark that um was brought up was in the there's going to be a time period between this ordinance passing and the work being performed and the assessments beginning is there a vehicle where we can record on each property that there is a assessment process coming almost like a 
a lean, but not really. Yeah, like a lean, but not a lean. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll have to look into that, but we should be able to figure something another, out. Another alternative is, uh, potentially, is that we could mount, there is currently a private street sign there. We could mount on the private street sign some sort of, like, they won't like it, <laughs> but some sort of uh, uh, prominent signage that says, basically, this the Columbia Place has been converted to a city right away. The expenses associated will be assessed against each property owner or something like that. Here in reference, you know, sort of something open and notorious. What 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 specifically is your concern? Because we're going to have the current homeowners sign. Are you concerned if somebody per sells in the interim? Yeah, the concern, and it's already happened. There's been a sale that's occurred recently uh, where the there was this proper disclosure. So okay. the new owner knows about it. But just that... And it's not really our liability whether or not they disclose, but just kind of a fairs fair Fairness. like making. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'll, I'm not sure there is for. I, I will figure it out. Okay. We'll figure something out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is protecting the new buyers. The future buyers. Yep. Right. And to, to that point, we've made sure that we do have signatures, even in introducing this ordinance from every property owner here. So there's awareness. We do. Mm -hmm. um, conversations with them about making sure you know, they need to share um, information. Or is that not I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know that I've had those specific conversations, but I think that um, the next step after this is still to get, I would like an individual letter signed from each property owner that just kind of copy the ordinance, copy the rough estimate, acknowledgement, you know, we could add to that an acknowledgement that it's their, their lawful requirement that they disclose the sharing right. financial buyers. I would really like that. To happen before we pass this, I, does that seem? That's part of this ordinance. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. it's it's written in the ordinance that that we would re, we would have them sign a contract with us prior to. Okay, that's what that was. Uh, okay. I was just going to say, subsequent owners though, they will be just automatically build that assessment, right? There's, or will they not? Right, they will automatically. Yeah, so like we don't... you could theoretically buy one of these houses, never really even pay that much attention. It would just automatically kick in as part of that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so we're not at risk. It's more what's fair to the you know future yeah. buyers. Sam, did you have a question? No, uh, I think that was. I just want to make sure before um, we pass this that we had that in writing from each. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't feel comfortable. Ms. Saad, I I completely agree um, with Sam and Lorianne. But quick question, um, Mayor Kessler, can you help me out in the ordinance and show me where they're held yep. accountable to signing that per individual residence. So this is, it's, it's that we would contract with them. Um, not that I, we don't have the specific language in their disclosure, but that could be a piece of our contracting with them. It's just the section in section two. And we're, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Um, I think that's reasonable for sure. Okay. Yep. Buddy. Um, I had a few questions. Um, Andy, what city services do we currently provide to Columbia Place, even though as of now they're a private street? Um, even though it's a private street, um, in the wintertime, we still do snow removal. Um, as far as leaf collection, they really don't have a whole lot of area to place their leaves. So usually they have that done by their own contractors. Um, but pretty much right now, just snow removal. Okay. Okay. Um, and this question might be for you or maybe for the mayor, what monies do these um, residents already pay into in the city that we benefit from? Okay, so they pay into the, through property taxes, they pay the street sidewalk and alley levy. And they also pay through their water bill, they pay the water sewer and the water and sewer capital charges as well. Um, so, that was kind of one of our conversations earlier on is that they are paying for common city infrastructure. Now they, when you have a PUR, like you choose to have a private street, it's kind of analogous to your own driveway. You pay for your own driveway, you maintain your own driveway. Um, where, where this is, I think uh, what's a little different here is that, you know, there is uh, infrastructure 
behind the or before I guess the water valves or water water uh, where the water meters are so that there's a lot more shared infrastructure. Um, they have asked to be, you know, a part of a, pu a public street. So again, just to recap where we've been through all these many years is through the negotiation said, okay, if you pay for the costs to bring this up to the city standard, then on a go forward basis, and it's no longer any option to make it a private street, you can't shut it off. There's no, there are no gates, there's no private, you know, private drive sort of aspect to this. Um, then uh, we would potentially be willing to consider uh, accepting that space. Okay. And then my my next question was: um, I heard Andy say the cost to the seven homes would be approximately one hundred eleven thousand, and the homeowners would completely cover that cost via repaying an assessment. So there would be no financial detriment to the city. Is that correct? That is correct. So it's it's actually the number is a little higher. I think it's I have one nineteen ish. Let me pull that up here. One nineteen three one nine, and it might be that Andy's doesn't have the contingency or the inspection. I'm not sure, but the the in the number we shared with the property owners is this higher number, um, and. I'm going to show, I was just also going to show you guys just as an additional piece of information for you to be aware of. This is a copy of the letter that was sent by and signed by the uh, owners. So. Mayor Kessler, are we able to get a copy of that and the, the uh, finances? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Good questions, everybody. Good questions, Lorianne. I know you almost got your master's thesis on this piece of legislation because we did, yeah, we did have this on the agenda for a, a whole year. And <laughs> you and me and Jess worked on this, I remember. And I think it's a testament that we did kind of persist and redo this and make sure that we think we've got something that's equitable and fair for, for everybody. Thank you. Other questions for Andy or the mayor or anybody? All right, if not, Mr. Fischel, please. All right, we move on to second reading of ordinance 15-23 to amend 618.15 of the city code, dogs on city park and recreational property introduced by Ms. Saad. Thank you. So this amendment is um, basically to help uh, keep dog waste off of our athletic fields in the city. So this would um, go in effect for our um, athletic fields, including Schneider Park. Basically, we're, we love our dogs in Bexley and uh, we love to see them out there, but we wanna keep them off of our athletic fields so that we can run, have our cleats on and uh, not have dog waste on the bottom of them. That might or might not have happened last week at Wolf Park with a bunch of nine-year-old baseball players. Four of them got in my car and it reminded me of how important this ordinance is. Goodness. And when a couple of the Grandview parents looked at me and said, Jess, um, what can you do about this? And I said, I, I would love to do a lot of things about this, but this is Wolf Park and it's the city of uh, Columbus. But in fact, I am uh, working with my fellow council members to do something on our local parks. So uh, good. Oh, job I think you're going to see you running for Columbus City Council <laughs> now. All right. So good job to our council. And again, uh, this has nothing to do with the fact that we do not love our dogs. We have a wonderful dog park that Mayor Kessler's worked so hard on, and the city is ecstatic about. Um, but this will uh, serve us well to keep uh, everybody in a good place to love thy neighbor, love thy dog owner neighbor. So. Those signs. <laughs> they have no cat sign. We should have the dog with a smile. Like a tongue out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, any more questions for uh, the dog, the dog thing? If not the dog, no, it's not anti-dog. Side, no, no. She's got a. There's a social media post. She's, she's got to run for re-election this year. Don't 
throw stuff well, like that out. I, 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 I was inappropriate during meetings, but geez. That was a very didactic comment, you know? Don't you think? I love dogs. I love dogs. I had to have Mark look up didactic for me. Dog owner. <laughs> I have a dog. All right. Let me, uh, let's move along. Wait, yeah. before we <laughs> Okay, we are under. Hold on, first. hold on. Could, um, would everyone be okay if we put that on the consent agenda? Or would you like it? Ms. I Clark? still, I, I, I think Troy and I are um, advocates of saying, let's give the public the opportunity okay. if someone no has problem. not seen it yet and they want to come in. So okay. thank no you problem. for bringing it up, but I think it needs to have a third reading. All right, we'll bring it around. Thank you. All right, first reading, resolution 2-23 to adopt the tax budget for calendar year 2024 attached here to as exhibit A introduced by Ms. Lamke. Um, thank you. Uh, once a year, we are required to file our tax budget with the auditor's office. Um, so this just does what we are required to do. Um, it does say 2023 tax budget. No. Should that be 2024 or am I reading that wrong? Oh, no, I'm looking at the whereas. whereas. That's that's correct. That's fine. Hey, it needs to say 2024 exhibit. Cool. And it said it later in the in the ordinance too. Future will correct that. Okay, thank you. Any any questions from council? All right. All right. If not, we move on to tabled ordinances. I'm thinking there's a chance we're going to clear the table tonight. Does that sound possible? Um, no. I think we might clear some table. All right. <laughs> I'm all right. So I'm I'm looking for subtle eye contact. No. Yeah. 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 Let's... We could give an update on 35.2, but I don't think it's ready. Oh, it's not ready. Okay. okay. Do we just? Okay. I think I could do it with it. So you want to take it out of the table as. Um, well, Robert's rules. Motion. Okay. Go ahead. I was going to say motion to remove 3522 from the table for discussion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, go ahead. Oh, well, uh, so we are still waiting to see if, because we there there are things that need to happen um, for, be, before, let me start this over. The date says September, that it'll start in September. We would very much like to change the date, um, the effective date to be um, January so that we can do a few things. So we can make sure that we can get the toters in so that we can make sure that we have an opportunity for, to, to, you know, to to talk to um, some of the businesses to make sure that they have, you know, their plan all set. But before we can do that, we want to make sure that Rumkey is going to honor the pricing that they've set for us for this September when we start it in January. Um, so that's that's some of what we need to check in on first. Um, we did have a meeting um, with uh, like an open house for any of the businesses that we sent all the letters to all the businesses. The only person that showed up was um, the gentleman who um, uh, manages the gateway. Alexander. Mm -hmm. um, and um, he just felt like he was doing his due diligence being there. So. Um, and we, we did receive some uh, correspondence, phone, and, and email with some prop business owners that we reached out to and talked through, and it was really constructive. So we have some amendments. It was helpful for us and helpful for, I think that. Is there anything I didn't cover there? Um, just that the amendments are are fairly minimal. They involve um, adding a commercial property uh, definition, uh, having a having a calculation for mixed use properties because it was silent on that. And then Mark is still doing a little bit of research on uh, some contract, potential contractual issues, just making sure we've really navigated all those properly. So I think we have those things, th that to button up right there on the final piece in the screen here. And then also just double checking that our pricing is good um, 
for January. But I think we're feeling good, and I think we will definitely be ready um, by our next meeting. Be awesome because we've been working on this for a while too, haven't we, Troy? <laughs> I was going to say Troy was in an apartment when we started talking about. I was going to say <laughs> if 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 these are if we're going to see like the first run like January first week of January, I am leading a field trip out to some of these places. <laughs> Ain't no doubt about it. All right, yeah, we. Yeah. It, it's it's not gonna be the other parks anymore, but you can still do that. <laughs> that's but that's, we'll some, that's the spirit, buddy. We'll get some rumkey uh, hats and go out and do it. It'll be fine. Um, the, any more comments or questions for Lorian May or anything? If not, uh, may uh, move to uh, place ordinance thirty five dash twenty two back on the table for the time being. I get a second. Thank you, Ms. Saad. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. Now, uh, I know. Well, wait. Well, okay. We have uh, heard from all of our land use strategy people except for Ken Gold. Um, and I know we have some options if we would like to keep this on the table. We can have Mr. Gold in. It maybe is not going to be super easy to do that. Is that what we're thinking? It would be wonderful to move forward. Uh, Ken's had some conflicts over the past couple of council meetings. Um, and uh, if you'll recall, he served on the land use strategy back in 2011. Um, and so he's one of uh, two members who have that institutional knowledge and experience. Um, it's neither here nor there, but his daughter Sarah serves in the CIC. Um, so I think you know he's a he's a well established, very experienced voice in the commercial real estate development world, and I think um, would be great on the commission. If there are any concerns, uh, then I think it would be wise to. I, I guess maybe I should have taken this off the table. Oh, sorry. I I was kind of just looking. Are we going to talk about this or not? But yeah, you're right. Go ahead. I would. I Mark would say, says we're good. I would say I'm. I mean, I, you need to tell me if you're comfortable moving forward. It would be great to move forward and get. More importantly, if anybody's uncomfortable, I think is what I really want to get a. Uh, if not, I am going to propose that we're going to take this off the table and vote on it. So, give me any threatening looks if you want to right now <laughs> before I do that. <laughs> Otherwise, I will uh, move to uh, to move Ordinance Eleven Dash Twenty Three off of the table at this time. Second. Second by Ms. Robinson. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. And um, given that the uh, information that the mayor has just given us, do you guys have any comments or questions or anything on, on this grouping? I would extend I a, that. I have oh. a comment. I'm, I'm just very excited for what they're going to do. Um, yeah. They have a lot of work to do. <laughs> It's not always going to be the most interesting and some of it might be kind of dry, but I think that the amount of talent and resources on this uh, commission is really going to benefit the city. I think it is fair to say that maybe there's one person more excited than you, and I think that is Matt Klingler. Unfortunately, he's not here to uh, tell us of his <laughs> excitement as well, but um, I would throw that out yeah. there as well and extend the opportunity to comment to the audience as well at this time. Before uh, I move to adopt ordinance 11 23. Can I get a second? Second. <laughs> second by Ms. Bible. Uh, <laughs> Mr. McPeak, can you call the roll? Yes. Ms. Lampke? Yes. Mr. Markham? Yes. Mr. Marcelino? Yes. <laughs> Ms. Saad? Yes. Ms. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Klingler and Ms. Feibel? Thank you. Ordinance passes. Mr. President, I dare to say there is somebody more excited than Mr. Klingler. <laughs> uh, when I was a council member, I uh, helped craft the land use strategy commission process and then chair it. And it was a great privilege of my, my life as a council member. And I am super excited to see this next generation of talent and vision and uh, help see that process through. Point well taken. You and Klingler are both a little giddy on this. So. We're both excited. Yeah. Good. Nice. <laughs> we like to see that. Um, and at this time also, I believe, again, 
unless there is some objection or I'm getting that vibe. I am going to uh, move to uh, re to remove ordinance 12-23 from the table. Second. A second by Ms. Feibel. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All right. Um, do we have any more work to do on this? Is there an amendment or anything? So, yes, Mr. President, up on the screen is a proposed amended ordinance, and I can quickly walk you through the proposed amendments. Please do. Um, Thank based you. upon the city attorney's review, he, he, he noted that it should be chapter 886, not section 886. Um, housing officer uh, is the correct term in, in lieu of um, director, which is used in Columbus's ordinance. So that was a carryover. So you'll see housing officer in red in several places. Um, and I believe. Okay. Oh, it's just a set. Uh, no, okay. I didn't, I didn't see the change there real quick. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. And there were a couple because of the change of this, or, of this ordinance where numbering was changed. Therefore, uh, Mark had flagged that we correct numbering. So 86.04C.10, chapter, not section. Um, this uh, section in the original uh, talked about uh, new development properties, all caps. It was a alluding to a uh, definition that didn't exist and really doesn't need to exist. Um, so it just explained if anything that's newly constructed. Um, and I believe that's it. Let me double check. So a little cleanup, but the rest of it is as it was when we, um, there's housing officer, like, Housing Council, we're good. Thank yeah. you. The rest of it as it was when we presented it, um, Mr. Klingler has seen these and uh, Mr. President, I believe you were in that email as well, expressed his support of voting on it tonight. Yeah, and I, I really I think we definitely need to do a shout out to Matt Klingler for all the work he's done on this. And also a thanks to you for the presentation that you did yep. last meeting two weeks ago. Uh, I'm super excited to have something like this. I think it really says something important about our, our um, you know, about the nature of our community, about our philosophy on these sorts of things. Um, I think it shows our commitment to affordable housing, that that remains a, uh, a, real, a real goal that we don't just give lip service to, that we, we are looking for real ways to make this happen. And, and so I'm really happy about the work that you guys have all done. And if I can just share, there were a couple articles in the dispatch last week. Um, the most recent one was on Saturday that focused on the communities doing a lot, which were Whitehall, Grove City, and Bexley. The other ones earlier in the week, Dublin and New Albany especially looked terrible, in my opinion, about their reluctance to diversify economically is really what they got kind of nailed on. So this is great. So yes, in my backyard. Yeah. Perfect timing. But this, this I, I mean, again, I just want to share that in case you hadn't seen the articles. And I think they even referenced that this was coming. They did in the articles. So, I mean, this is. Phenomenal. The only thing I think you got wrong is you list those cities in the wrong order. Okay. Bexley, Whitehall. That's they spent most time with Whitehall, though. So all right. All right. Let's go. Room to develop. Comments or questions from City Council. Yes, Ms. Saad. I also uh just want to acknowledge this work. It's important. And um I'm proud of all of us for doing our due diligence, asking a lot of questions, diving into it. And I think it helps uh, people, not just us who are investing in our city, but those who are coming in and want to do investment projects in our city, know that we're serious about this and uh, that we want to get creative. And I'm uh, I'm excited about this ordinance. So good work. Yes, Ms. Feibel. I just want to echo um, what you all have said. Um, you know that my work with Move to Prosper um, by cities like ours doing great things like this, great organizations like Move to Prosper are able to do what they do. So thank you so much. It's really, really important. I would invite comment from the, yes, please. Make sure that microphone's on. Please tell us your address. Don Lewis, 663 Euclid. 
but you don't know. Um, under the whereas this, it says the city wishes to refine the affordable housing criteria of these CRAs. Can somebody give me a definition of what that means specifically? I'm, I'm happy to. Is that a legal question? Okay. So chapter 886, which is what this is amending, and I'm pulling it up right now so I can make sure I'm quoting this to you exactly correctly, currently has provisions for 100% abatement within uh, developments that are more affordable. Um, it, it uses the terminology, let me, let me pull it up exactly, that any new construction property with an average investment of $250,000 per unit or less that still is at least 1,500 square feet on average is eligible for 100% abatement. Anything in excess of that dollar amount is eligible for a 70% abatement. So all the developments we've seen on Main Street have not passed that affordability threshold, and they've been at the 70% mark. And the intent of that affordability threshold was it was a 2015 version of incentivizing mixed income housing um, written by yours truly uh, trying to be, and Richard Sharp and I worked on that together at the time, trying to create this idea that it might be a unit that's a little more accessible to an empty nester who's not in a mansion, you know, um, it had not attracted, uh, it hadn't attracted any interest for a couple of reasons. First off, you're like averaging a cost out and you're averaging a size out. And it would really mean that the whole development would have to kind of hit a certain threshold. What I think is better about this approach that we're talking about here is it allows it allows for luxury apartments and luxury condos as long as a section of it has some sort of affordability. So that's the difference. There was, there is today an affordability threshold. It's just more of a blunt instrument. This is a little bit more refined and more in keeping with what the market's doing. Yep. Yes, please. Constance Lewis, 663 Euclid. Does this have anything or any, um, effect on the lawsuit that the city is involved in with TCB, the property development on Livingston, would this have any effect on that or the judge's decision or anything that having to do with that? It's a city attorney question. Absolutely nothing. It's totally unrelated. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I would uh, move to amend ordinance 12-23 as shown. Second. Seconded by uh, Ms. Robinson. Mr. McPeak, please. Ms. Feibel? Yes. Ms. Saad? Yes. Ms. Lampke? Yes. Ms. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Markham? Yes. Mr. Marcelino? Yes. Mr. Klingler? Proposed amended ordinance passes. Um, I will just, since we're doing this in two parts, open this up for any questions or discussion again, just before my next motion to anybody. If not, uh, move to adopt ordinance 12-23. Second. Second by Ms. Feibel. Mr. McPeak, please. Ms. Saad? Yes. Ms. Lamke? Yes. Mr. Marcelino? Yes. Ms. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Klingler? Ms. Feibel? And Mr. Markham. Yes. Ordinance passes. Thank you. All right. We didn't quite clear the table, but we did we, we did move some stuff tonight. So uh, time for uh, committee uh, reports. And we'll start off with Ms. Jen Robinson with strategic committee, please. Ms. Jen Robinson. Um, yeah, my computer just died. So the notes that I... <laughs> was going to read now going to wing no it's it's fine um i just wanted to uh, reiterate that our next one bexley project event is next thursday i know we had asked everybody to mark their calendars it's at 6 30. um i believe the mayor may have said the library that's where our last one was this one will be at capitol um but we had a meeting today kind of to hash out what that event is actually going to look like and i am i'm so 
I'm so proud of the work that's being done, and I'm really, really excited for uh, for next Thursday. Um, I think um, the event itself will be really great. We are finalizing communication. You will be getting communication from me and potentially others, hopefully. Uh, but we really do. This work will only work if we have a true community conversation about um, about our city's history and about reckoning with that and moving forward. And I, I encourage those of you who have any questions to please reach out to me or Mr. Kessler, although I know he's busy, so reach out to me. <laughs> and I'm happy to uh, to answer any questions that you may have. And um, I will be um, asking each of you to invite some people who don't normally show up to these kinds of events. We really are um, working really hard and very much committed. These are groups that don't always work together and we are working together. And uh, what we are doing is really important. And the we have wonderful parks, we have beautiful new signage, we have all of these beautiful gems in, in the city of Bexley, and none of that really matters unless we have engaged and um, committed and, and welcomed residents in our community. And I am very, very excited for next Thursday. So next Thursday, the 18th, 6.30, yes. Um, it will be at Capitol. We're still working out the specifics of where it will be at Capitol, but we will let all of that, uh, everybody know it will be in the communication that hopefully will be finalized this evening so we can start sending things out. Yeah, I think we're sending tomorrow. a special blast out tomorrow too. Amazing. I okay. think it's at the student union, right? Yeah, I thought, but I just, I knew that there was some conversation about just double checking that that was where it was. So yes, cool. yes. Look for that and invite your friends. Cool. Thanks to all of you for your work on that. Uh, Mr. Klingler's not here tonight. I, he did not put any report with me. I don't know if he did with anybody. Uh, yeah, he left a report with me that he just, uh, he wanted to note that um, President Markham was smart, good looking, and a fantastic leader. Yeah. And that uh, he enjoyed, uh, he's going to enjoy listening to the council meeting after the fact. Natalie, did you get all of that? Do you, should he, do you need him to repeat any of that? All right, thank you. Ms. Yeah. Feihol. Service and environmental. What is ours? Uh, why don't you please join us on a Thursday, please? Um, we went to the um, Thursday is the day that the the bloomers do their thing at Jeffrey Mansion, and they are trying so hard, guys, to get a thousand hours this year of volunteer time. Saves our, our city a lot of money, and it helps us, really. Um, and it's fun to build community. It's a, really a good time. You learn all kinds of stuff. Uh, I did my hours this week um, for city council. And I didn't have a single somebody come and visit me. <laughs> so we'll keep thinking about this. And um, it was suggested that may, may, maybe, and maybe we'll, we'll give it another month or so. Maybe it would be something we did once a month yeah. or some such thing. So we'll keep thinking about it. Um, it was fine. I got lots done, which was good. Um, if you have time and a talent, the Bexley Celebrations and Events um, group is doing our main event on June the 2nd, and it's Bexley's Got Talent, question mark, you decide. <laughs> and we're doing adults, and we're doing kiddos, and it could be any kind of theatrical <laughs> or, or musical or any kind of talent. So, um, Love to see you on the main lawn at Capital University doing that. And please check out all the other things that my wonderful team has been putting together as far as we have a great lineup for jazz in the park this year. Um, Alex Silverman is really working hard on our um, barbecue, what do we call it? Smoke and fire, good thing. Smoke and fire, it's gonna be great this year. So um, parade, we're looking for member people to be in the parade. So be thinking, so join us. Join us to make um, shared memories and build community. And a report. Thank you. Ms. Saad, Recreation and Parks, please. Yes, thank you. Um, so this Friday night, um, 
Bexley Rec will be sponsoring their first team party. 70 kids have registered. Um, and it's from six to 10 and currently it's at the senior center. So super excited to see how that goes. There's going to be um, Kona ice and the rec department's done a nice job with getting um, gift cards. So the kids will come in, they'll get a raffle ticket just for being there and they could get an Apple gift card. They could get a um, Starbucks gift card, a bubble tea. Um, they're going to have, you know, live music playing. It's just, it's a nice uh, gesture by Park and Rec to recognize teen space and opportunity for kids to get out there and know that it's a place that they're welcome to be. And these kids are needing that social time as we've kind of discussed more than ever. And you're really seeing it in the teen world. And I think this is a great mental health um, piece to get these kids out socializing together outside of school. Um, all good things. So I'm excited to report on how that goes. Hopefully the weather cooperates. Um, I got great feedback. I had participated in the Sunday version. Yes, Mayor Kessler, who was so kind to drop a sign to me at the house um, in the yard sale free cycle. I had six people come to my garage during the rain. And then at one o'clock when, you know, you could do the free cycle, of course, the sun came out and it was beautiful. Um, but I got great uh, feedback from the community saying that they loved the two day option because it gave them the opportunity to get out there either on Saturday or Sunday. I also had more people talking about the yard sale free cycle event. I, this is my third year participating than ever before. So I think that having it those two days just brought a little bit more awareness. Um, I saw a lot of teens even wanting to go out with their $5 or, or $10, get on their bikes and go participate. So there were some things that came back in my home that I was trying to get rid of. Um, but it, it was great. And it's great to see that event get bigger because it's uh, it's very well done. And if you haven't participated um, in the past, I highly recommend it for next year. We have a park and rec meeting tomorrow night at 530. Um, and that's the end of report. Thank you, Ms. Lamke, finance. No report this evening. Mr. Marcelino, safety and health. Uh, two things. Uh, first, there I can't remember if I said this the last time, so I'm just going to say it again. There was a board of health meeting that took place a couple of weeks ago. Uh, during that, we discussed potentially uh, an ordinance that would uh, force those that spray privately to notify uh, their neighbors, um, putting that into the code. Because as we heard, we are not currently going to be doing anything um, in, in terms of uh, banning private spray at this time uh, until we get some more information and perhaps another lengthy uh, presentation about those mosquitoes. Um, Mary Kessler, you look perplexed by that. Maybe it was something else. I just want to make sure you didn't want to add something. Okay, no, that's quite. I just want to make sure it wasn't something that's all right. I feel like a teacher, you know, when somebody's not really paying attention, and then all of a sudden, you know, that's okay. Attention, eyes up here, Mr. Kessler. Thank you very much. Uh, secondarily, I would like to uh, draw some attention to office hours. We have Miss Jen Robinson joining us on uh, May seventeenth, two thousand twenty-three. Uh, from 8.30 to 10.30. So if you have any questions about strategery uh, or just Bexley in general, please come visit her. She will be ready, willing, and able. We still have a couple slots the next week. Or baking, maybe. Uh, yeah. So please feel free to get back on there and sign up if you haven't yet. Um, and I apologize for Lori, and I assume this is just because you didn't have me hyping up the session for That's you. Right. You'll be flooded now, so yeah. I get you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Enjoy. All right, basically. <laughs> I was happy to be there. We're gonna st we're gonna start stepping up our blast promotions too, where we'll just sort of like yeah. promise stuff exactly that you guys don't have to fear to deliver on. I want to get that I want to get that big sign out front and just says today only Sam Marcelino, Lorian Feibel, and like a little arrow or something. That's what I want to say. <laughs> Uh, at this time, we invite public comments on anything. Yes, <laughs> literally anything. Constance Lewis, 663 Euclid. I just want to say that we participated in the yard sale on Saturday, not Sunday. And we had people from Logan and from Circleville. Uh, we had a great turnout. We had beautiful weather. And um, the only thing, we don't do Venmo or Apple's coin or whatever that is. So we were kind of old school at our location, but there may be some people that that do Venmo, not, not at the Lewis household, but we did great. And it was a beautiful day and we got rid of tons of stuff and we're looking forward to another one so we can get rid of more stuff. So thank you very much. And now you're uh, on the clock. You got a whole year to get the Venmo going. 
<laughs> All right. Any other public comments? If not, I know Mayor Kessler has. Real quickly, um, Mr. President, I put a CIC update in writing my mayor's update. I know you guys have talked about that. So just take a look at it. I forgot to highlight that. Just a few, just what happened at CIC last night. Oh, okay. In terms of, and also, um, I did note leaving the CSC last night that Jen Robinson was belting out a song in her car so at the scary. stoplight. Uh, wow. I think we might have a talent contestant for the town show, that's all I'm saying. Sweet. I was like, at this time, I move that this council move into executive session to consider the purchase of property, both real, personal, tangible, and intangible, or to consider the sale of property, either real or personal, by competitive bid, if disclosure of the information would give a competitive advantage to the other side by Division G2 of Section 121.22 of the revised code. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Ms. Saad. Please give us the roll call. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Marcelino? Yes. Ms. Feibel? Yes. Mr. Markham? Yes. Ms. Lamke? Yes. And Ms. Saad? Yes. We are set to move into executive session. We must ask you to leave. That's why they Yeah.
Aye. 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 I don't think. Um, I didn't. I didn't know I was supposed to be mic'd for that. But I move to exit executive session, seconded by Jen Robinson. Aren't we still in executive session when that happens? That's not a minutes thing. Oh, it's a minutes thing, but we don't have to have it on the recording. You can just share that with. All right. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Ms. Five. All in favor say aye. 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 We'll post the same sign.